Today's guest is an animator, author, and now YouTube video content creator. You want to know more? Well, stay tuned. Welcome to Self-Publishing with Dale, and if you want to learn more about self-publishing your own books, then make sure you subscribe and turn your notifications on for all my latest videos. My guest, John Celestri, comes with quite a storied history in animation, as well as self-publishing books in the pre-Kindle days. For four decades, John Celestri has been entertaining the hearts and minds in the world of animation with such notable cartoons as He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, the Care Bears movie, and the arcade smash hit Dragon's Lair. John has worked on over 50 feature-length films, half-hour TV specials and videos, having learned the basics of classical animation on the job from old Popeye and Mighty Mouse animators. In the late 1990s, John joined his wife, Kathy, to produce five novels under the pen name Kathy John. They published their own books and learned the craft of self-publishing books before the boom of electronic books and print-on-demand sites. That's what brings John to the show today. And I want to welcome you officially to the show, John. I am super excited, and I say this a lot, but this time I am about having you on today, so welcome. Thank you, Dale. Thanks for having me and inviting me to, uh, to talk with you. Hey, I, I am really geeked up. In, in, not too many people probably are aware of this as my viewers here on Self Publishing with Dale. I am a huge cartoon fanatic. Um, I, it was something I wanted to pursue a number of years ago, but I think what drew me more was actually writing, and I think that spoke loudly to me. So having you here, I'm fanboying right now. I really am. I haven't <laughs> expressed that to you in a direct concern. Actually, I kind of did actually before the, uh, the interview here. So um, yeah, you know, you and I, let's, let's kind of lay a little bit of groundwork here for our viewers. How did we meet each other? Well, it was through uh, uh, the YouTube, uh, it was the group, uh, what is it, uh, uh, video, can't quite remember, the Brian, Brian G. Johnson's uh, group. Yes, Tube Ritual, that's right. Yeah, and that's how, that's how we met. We started to, uh, uh, you know, we just started uh, communicating back and forth. You saw what, I think you saw my first uh, video, my half minute video, the intro, and yeah. that, that's how we started talking. Yes, and of course, uh, your YouTube channel, what, what do you uh, produce on that YouTube channel? I'm doing tutorials of how to do traditional animation, the old school way. And so I'm just passing along everything, all the knowledge that I know, you know, from the past, um, the past 40 years, and uh, passing it on to uh, anybody who wants to really know how to draw animation. Fantastic. Hopefully we are going to double back around uh, towards the end of the show and maybe uh, plug that even further because I am really, uh, you've already had what, about three videos released and I've watched every single one of them so far. Right. I've, I've been trying, I'm trying to do one a week. <laughs> and that's, a, that's a, for me, that's a, that's a pretty uh, steady pace because of the amount of animation that I do and, okay. and, and uh, just the whole production for me, has to be a bit, a bit slicker than, than what I expected I was going to do. But once I, you start, you go on. Okay. I, I recognize what you're sitting next to right there. Um, you know, explain to the viewers, what exactly are you sitting next to? Okay, this is my uh, animation desk. This is my disc that I work on. I draw everything on here. Mm -hmm. It has an underlight that, uh, that sometimes I use for in-betweens you'll get a little flash like there, okay? This is where I do my entire setup for every video. I use this wow. as my stage. And so therefore, when you come and, and watch my videos, you are sitting besides me. And that's the whole feeling that I want you. I want you to feel as though you're visiting my studio. Wow. Yeah, it definitely feels that way anytime I'm watching it. And I find myself just the kid in me coming out as I'm watching. Your more recent one was a little longer at about 14, 15 minutes long. But I felt like um, I can watch a 14 to 15 minute video of somebody else. But for some reason, I, I had to watch that in normal time. I can't two X it. And I would just sit there and absorb it. And I watched as you were doing each one of the, uh, the shots. But I don't want to go too far down this, okay. this path because what brings you to the show today is that you are 
might I say, you're, you're definitely one of the original self-publishers, the do-it-yourself publishers. You and your wife formed a writing team back in the 1990s, am I correct? Correct, yes. So we published you... Well, we, the way we started is that I wanted to do, uh, I was trying to do uh, graphic novels and things of that sort, and that wasn't going anywhere. My wife wanted to write, and she wasn't getting any response. So I said, okay, well, why don't we just try the, the mystery genre? You know, I know, I knew about, um, I knew about, um, about storytelling from all the years that I'd been working on feature films mm -hmm. and shows. And so we, we started really to teach ourselves writing. And so uh, what we did was we decided to say, okay, I know story structure. I know how to pull together plots and character development and write backstory mm -hmm. and create all of that. Kathy was, is, a, is a wordsmith. She can, the way we, we would talk about it is that I, I, build, I build, I construct the, the room or the house and she decorates it. And so by doing that, she would handle characters, the more, the more feminine characters, I would be the, the more male characters. But what we would do is sit beside each, uh, because Kathy had, had a problem, has a problem with her eyes, I'm the one who sits at the desk, at the, at the computer, at the, at the keyboard, and then she would sit in the corner, and then we would chew over every sentence <laughs> and write that way. Wow. So that probably took a long time being novels. About how many words were each one of these novels? Well, we, we, we started off with, um, you know, the, the, er, the, the first ones were, um, the uh, Kate Cavanaugh mysteries, and that took place in Cincinnati. And they were they were more cul they were culinary, culinary culinary mysteries. Okay, you know, based on 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 a character who was a a uh, a caterer, which Kathy w had done, had worked in the restaurant and catering industry, and the character was a breast cancer survivor, which Kathy at the time had been a very young breast breast cancer survivor. Wow. So we, we put those, those exper her, her experience in and her knowledge and my ability. And so that's how we, we started. And um, we said, okay, let's write a simple crime fiction, you know, cozy mystery. And it was about 60,000 words. And that's, we started with a 60,000 word uh, uh, story. That went up to about 70,000 on the second book. Then the third book was a bit more, it was more like about 85 or 90,000 words, wow. you know, and then, and then so we, so we, we developed into that and then we went, we shifted gears, but still within the same framework of the, of the, uh, the family of characters and went back to the days of the Newport casinos in the 1940s. That was before Vegas. And that, those, that was that area in Newport, Kentucky, was the prototype for the Las Vegas casinos of the 1950s and 60s, you know, with the Rat Pack and things of that sort. Anyway, mm -hmm. that, that, that shows you that we got into a passion and we'll be able to do stuff. And you have to be passionate about what you're writing, because if you're writing as a team, you have to defend yourself, but at the same time, you have to love each other better. <laughs> so... Was there ever any challenges to where you would butt heads that you'd have to maybe step back from your work? Constantly. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because whichever idea really was the strongest, it had to make sense. You always had to, you defended yourself. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we, what we said was that this is why we say, I said, I would say, uh, this character won't do such and such. And this sounds better to me. And she would say, well, you know what? No, it doesn't sound so good to me because from the female point of view that this is why this character is doing that. If you want him to be a, a realistic character and a, 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 a sympathetic character to the female, well, you better change this. And so we would work it back and forth like that. Uh, and um, so um, that was, uh, we just, uh, whichever one, Whichever idea really was more truthful and honest, that's what we went with. 
Interesting. Did you ever find yourself at a standstill, uh, especially maybe like where you felt pretty passionate about a particular direction and she felt passionate that you had to maybe pause and come back to it, say a day later or a week later? No, no, because 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 what we would do is I would structure everything first mm-hmm. because we knew what the backstories were. Ah. We, we didn't we, what we would do is um, in terms of pulling the story together. The structure was laid out. I would start with themes. I say, okay, this is about the what's the cent- central theme? Okay, um, you know, uh, um, mi- a mystery about uh, you know, uh, uh, mom always liked you best. Let's just say, okay, okay, well, okay. So, how many different characters would work into that? Now, what's their backstory? How do they? We would write these various plots of these various characters we have many Mm -hmm. many different characters but they would all interweave Mm -hmm. and then i would write straight lines you know as to this is what the character is doing all the way from beginning to end this is what the character is doing from and plot it out that way and then start intercutting and weaving them so that at the crucial point you go leave from one character to another character that still works the plot forward sometimes you had to cut yeah. back stuff but you still knew what was going on and so you know we never went blind on anything so we always worked out those things first so do you think uh there's two words that are, are tossed around when it comes to writing styles and especially when it comes to fiction especially mm-hmm. There's pantsers and there's plotters. Pantser meaning they just fly by the seat of their pants and whenever they finish their work, they're finished. And then there's plotters that really are detailed and lay everything out. So I'm to assume that you two were plotters. Uh, Well, what happened is that once you plot something, you don't do it so tightly Mm -hmm. that there's not room for the character to tell you, I want to go in that other direction. Mm, Okay. Because, but you have to understand what the character is all about. Interesting. So laying that groundwork ahead of time allowed you the freedom to kind of express yourself as you went along. Yes. Very much similar to animation. Yeah. You do, you lay out your guideposts and then you work, you know what you've got to hit. You've got to, you know where everything is structurally there, but you start moving around and you get and you wind your way from point point to another. That's where the creativity is. That's where the enthusiasm, but you still are guided and you still work within a structure knowing that you will finally reach a certain point. But, um, you know, you, you, sometimes you, you know, you, if you don't, if you do that, if you, if you structure it correctly, there's less waste Mm -hmm. of effort. Very, very cool. I'm glad you're able to kind of expose this because right now I'm actually uh, right in the middle of National Novel Writing Month. And when this gets released, it'll probably be towards the end of National Novel Writing Month. And uh, so I'm brand new to fiction. So you're really kind of, you know, helping me out and etch out exactly the direction I want to go in because I'm comfortable in doing nonfiction. Getting into this fiction area, I'm a lot more <laughs> uncomfortable. But uh, rather than talk about me, let's focus on the publishing process so you wrote everything together Mm -hmm. what was your end goal when you went into this was it let's just write something together or were you looking at getting a large publishing house dealer or had you planned all along to do it yourself well the reason we decided finally to publish it ourselves is because nobody was no, no agent was interested we couldn't get anybody interested in our first book or even the idea of what we were doing they just were not interested so we said okay well so let's do something regional and at the time you still had a lot of small bookstores mystery and then you had in, in throughout the nation there may be about there were about maybe about 300 um mystery bookstores that you know worked you know did their um uh, uh, that focused on mystery novels and things of that sort what happened was that because of where we were in cincinnati at the time um we were able to get into you know like say barnes and noble because they um we were picked up by a small okay we backtrack a little bit. We were picked up by a small 
regional uh, dis distributor okay. who was bought within six months or what have you, or a few years, yeah, we within six or seven months by Ingram, which was the major distri uh, distributor, books distributor. Mm -hmm. So we suddenly, our little book got pulled in <laughs> to, into Ingram's system because we were wow. grandfathered in, okay? But wow. we still had to do you know, we have we still had to figure out, okay, how are we going to get our book out there? And so we decided to go the regional area where we would do book uh, book signings or, you know, books, bookstores that would put local authors, you know, and have, uh, you know, like an author's night or something along those lines. So that's how we, that's how we started. Awesome. Very good. So you just had perfect timing, especially being snatched up by Ingram. Uh, yeah. So there was some good timing, but also you're saying too that you didn't just let rest on your laurels. You actually had to go out there and pound the pavement to get your book out and get more. Oh, when you are okay. Here's the fallacy of those who don't who don't know know how the book publishing industry is. Even mm -hmm. 20 years ago, what happened is that a publishers will pick you up mm -hmm. if they pick up somebody. Okay, they'll pick up somebody who already has an audience. Yeah. Okay, so you have that. If you don't have any audience, well, you have to have some kind of connection to a potentially showing you are some big, you know, expert. Whatever. This is for any any kind of book. Yeah. Now, what you what 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 you have to do if um, and they only do the publishers will only promote a certain number of authors that they have. Uh, uh, they've given big contracts to, and the big ones who are getting those contracts are going to be the ones that they know that they can move 500,000 copies at a time at the mm -hmm. beginning. Well, for a small a mystery person, you have to produce your own stuff. They'll give you, they'll, they'll say, okay, here's a contract for 5,000 copies, and you've got $5,000, here's your, um, uh, here's your, your advance on things, mm -hmm. but you have to promote it yourself. So you wind up doing all the work anyway because they want to have the book already pre-edited. So you are doing writing, editing, and promotion. So wow. the thing that they are providing is an, a conduit to distribution and with their catalog. Yeah. However, the shelf life of a book is maybe six weeks, four yeah. weeks. So it's, uh, you know, I mean, milk can go, uh, good milk will last longer than that on the shelf. <laughs> That's true. That's not far. That's not far from the truth right there. Yeah. So, so, but we, 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 we carried along on that. We were able to build what we did over a period of time because we were picked up. We got good reviews. And then we started to get you, we, we had to do every, we did everything ourselves getting mm -hmm. book, reviews from, um, um, uh, what is it, um, uh, Booklist, uh, okay. Writer's Digest, um, nice. um, and then finally our big ones, we were getting picked up by all the mystery conferences, mystery uh, reviewers, okay? And then finally our big one was the Chicago Tribune in our last book, and that gave us a great review at the end. And so, you know, so we went through all of, of that, but, you know, it is a business and you have to have distribution. If you get cut off, there's no place to go. Yeah. Now, I know that I'm, 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 maybe I'm getting ahead of the conversation, but you, okay. you tell me where we go, where, where you want to go next on this. No, no, that's a okay. You're, you're, you're really, you're, you're covering some great things. I know that sometimes if I say it, um, it kind of seems like, ah, some people will say that eh, he kind of knows what he's talking about. Whereas if I bring someone that such as yourself, third party, party credibility really brings a lot more. It cements what I, I've always shared. And it's so cool to hear you actually come out and say it. Um, so uh, the, I'm going to move forward a little bit more. It seems like we kind of covered a few of the questions I had on tap. So my question is, you were doing this in the late 90s, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. So how has the publishing industry changed since you published your last novel? Okay. When we published our last novel, um, 
um, was it um, print on demand had just started to come into play. Okay. And, but you know, it, the, the distribution elements to it, uh, you know, we just kind of said, okay, we, you know, that we had to move on to something else. So we decided, okay, that's that. But today you have two major aspects for anybody who has a vision for a book. You've got eBooks and mm -hmm. you've got print on demand. You can do e an eBook and it won't cost you anything other than the effort in terms of financially is putting it out on the platforms, just learning how to do that production yeah. and everybody do it, do it and get it out there. Uh, mm -hmm. And you'll have to do promotion. You'll have to do whatever it is. You can then also set up with whatever is uh, the, the, uh, the platforms that also do print on demand. So you can offer both. Like for, for example, we still have uh, with, with Amazon, Amazon still carries our eBooks. We put that out. Mm -hmm. And so every now and then we'll get, you know, a little bit of, of, of money because we, we are a self-publisher. And yeah. so we'll get a little something and you could see the two and you get, you can download both uh, little Mexico and in the name of the father. And they're, they're both Chris, they're both uh, uh, crime fiction novels, the gangster stuff. And they're available in the, uh, in Amazon, but we haven't gone the, uh, the self-publishing route because it's it's still I mean rather a uh, the the print on demand route because mm -hmm. we haven't pursued that I mean we've got other things we want to do right. I'm working on to the with the YouTube channel and that's a lot of effort uh, you know right there so whatever you want but the I would say that right now you have all the platforms available by um, uh, you know, for anybody to be able to put your 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 vision exactly the way you want it to be mm -hmm. out there in front of eyeballs, and then you just need to know how to get it to people to to see. You need readers, and yeah. you know you've got the internet. That is, open up your own little pop stand somewhere. You know, it, 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 that's what's that's what it's all about. Because then. Either you become a big success or you be a small, small success or what have you, but you'll learn and you, and you can get better. It just depends on how much effort you want to put into it. So uh, I'm going to backtrack just a little bit and hopefully relate and tie yeah. it in here to what we're saying right now is, um, can a person just publish a book and just make a bunch of money, become an overnight success, or do people need to actually work hard? <laughs> well, uh, anything is possible. It depends on what you're starting with. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you are, uh, you know, a, a high ranking government official who has just blown the whistle on somebody, you're going to yeah. make a lot of money. If you are, uh, if you've, you've been running a candy store, or I'm sorry, that, that, that ages me. If you've been running a corner <laughs> store somewhere or a 7-Eleven yeah. or what have you, it'll take a little harder, a little more effort. Yeah. But nobody's going to say that you might do like, for example, I think it's Hugh Howey, um, mm -hmm. in, science, in, 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 in fantasy. He started doing short stories and whatnot. It became a New York Times bestseller working off of eBooks. Yeah. So I think I got the name correct. I think. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. So, and he did like out of nowhere. So there, it is possible, but that's like, you know, winning the lottery. Ah, like, the, he, like Hugh Howie might be a unicorn amongst uh, other horses. Yeah. I mean, I mean, he, he hit something that people wanted. He, he, he spoke to them in some way, shape or form. Or, and also it depends on, you know, how much ground is being covered by everybody else. Because if everybody's doing it, you got to stand out again. So yeah. that's, you know, there, there are so many different things, but yes, it is possible, but you know, you're going to have to work hard to maintain it. Yeah. So, so true. You just can't throw it out in the market and expect it to hold. Once again, you kind of say the shelf life is only four to six weeks and this yeah. isn't just an Amazon thing. It's, it's a publication thing altogether. It really right. is. 
And I've got some books that maintain pretty well only because I get out there and I bring the eyeballs to it, that I market it and that I share it with people and that I do email marketing. So this is awesome. I'm so glad to hear you say this. Um, question for you. I think I already know the answer. Are there any other books in the works for Kathy John? Uh, at this time, I really can't tell you. Nothing is, you never know. Yeah. But right now, we've got other projects that we are focusing on. And so therefore, we know what it takes to do those projects. Yeah. And so it's, it's just a matter of saying, okay, let's do, let's, let's go on. You know, it's like, you know, who knows if, uh, if, uh, if, if, uh, people loved the, 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 uh, the gangster novels, who knows, we may do, you know, more of them. I had worked out, you know, like 16 years worth of material <laughs> because it follows historical, it's historical fiction. Yeah. So therefore I follow fictional characters in historical period and follow the, the growth of, of the Newport casino sign, uh, scene until it becomes, you know, until they move out of Kentucky and go and open into uh, Las Vegas. And that mm. goes from the mid 40s to 1960. So I had a period of time. So, but, you know, you never know. I, I, yeah. I, I won't say no. You won't rule it out, but there's no. definitely some no. uh, higher priorities yeah. at this point than it seems. So and right. I know you got your hands full with the YouTube uh, video. Uh, just a couple more questions before we wrap things up. Uh, have you considered or have you already done an illustrated children's book? Because you obviously have talent and talent to spare and your ability to animate. Have you thought about doing something like that before? Well, I've, yeah, in, in, in the past, I always, you know, I thought about that sort of thing. I always thought about the, you know, I always uh, uh, went toward the Maurice Sendak kind of school. Okay. And uh, another pro Brooklynite. So, you know, you have that kind of feel. But if I do anything, it will be uh, with my Snuffy and Zoe, the cartoon characters. You know, my comic, uh, the, the, the animation characters. I would work with their, their imaginations and what they do playing in the magic box, the toy box that they, that they play with. And these are the two characters we can find on your YouTube channel, correct? Yeah. Yeah, but nice. I'm starting to use them as examples of how to uh, do uh, squash and stretch, overlapping action. And at some point, I'll, I will release their for, first cartoon. It's a two and a half minute cartoon. And uh, so, and, and one of the things I do is I keep it, uh, the, the, they don't have voices. It's all pantomime, but with music and what have you and sound effects and things of that sort. So it's really interesting for, it, it's, it's followable. You can follow it, young children can, and so on. So I figured that would be the, uh, the area that I would go in developing them. That is tremendous. And if they're kind of becoming your, your brand, if you will, kind of the face of your brand. Right, yes. That's, that is really, really cool. Well, you know, we're gonna start to wrap things up, but before we do, how can the viewers find you? What's the best way to contact you? And of course, I want you to plug your YouTube channel because it's probably one of my favorites right now. Okay, thanks. Well, what you could do is, I have several, uh, I have uh, several, uh, I have a blog that's, uh, but if you type in John the Animator, you know, John the Animator Guy on, on Google, you'll mm -hmm. find me. If you, if you type in John Celestri, you'll find me. And if you go to YouTube, type in John Celestri, C-E-L-E-S-T-R-I, J-O-H-N is John. And they'll start pulling up those videos. And you can go to my channel. And I have, a, I have, a, uh, I have an email that you can click onto when we, you know, with the about page in, uh, in, uh, uh, in YouTube. You can, you can get me that way. Just uh, have a de dedicated uh, email for that. Wonderful. Very good. And, and of course, those of you that are watching this, I'm going to leave all the relevant links in the description down below, as well as some links to Kathy John's content, because obviously you may want to get your hands on some of this. Uh, so John, I really, I can't thank you enough for taking time out of your day. And even, you know, prior to us talking here, I just, like I said, I got to fanboy out about he man of the masters of the universe. And I'm sure there's some other people out there who can be able to remember that. Uh, so well, in any event, I really do appreciate you taking your time. 
folks, there is just, he's given quite a bit of information. So I just implore you, please reach out to him and at least say hi, or even tell him thank you for some of the things that he's actually put, put out in the animation community over the years. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you share it with somebody that you think will be into it too. Till later, it's been Self-Publishing with Dale, and I'll see you soon.